this is powder guys so in this video we're going to talk about the different forms of powder and various application techniques we use powder to seal the makeup and uh, too much can look chalky or cakey too little and your foundation can move slip crease and shine so it is an important product to use some of you may or may not enjoy powder but hopefully some of these strategies can help you to like it better because I do, I'm a powder lover. I like to have my powder and it can be used for many different little interesting things. So uh, let's get started. The first thing we're gonna talk about is how. Okay, so my favorite way to apply powder is always use that sponge that has the water in it that you squished out the excess product from because using a little bit of a damp sponge with the dry powder, for example, um, will have the powder go on in not such a cakey way. Um, but if you're trying to do like, you know, you've seen um, people do powder that's packed on under the eyes or chiseled on it, that's usually done with a powder puff, which is more dry. So you can use a powder puff as well. But my favorite way to do it on the, on the norm is to use uh, a wet sponge because I can get the powder looking um, less cakey and dry because of the moisture from the sponge and yeah it's my favorite way to apply it just watch out the powder needs to be either their skin color or your skin color or it needs to be even uh, translucent or I would prefer probably slightly lighter than slightly darker darker powders unless they're brushed on strategically maybe in where the sun hits the face can make the face look dirty in the wrong spots so that dirty look is almost impossible to erase so just very mindful not to go darker with powder in areas that you really don't want it to go go so like all this area here where it should be brighter and lightened up enlightened and where the shadows are occurring like around the three of our face here those areas are ones that you definitely um, can do a little bit more warmth and tone to but in in all fairness i i just a translucent or bang on your skin color is probably the safe bet to go um, when it comes to powder because yeah a wrong powder darker powder color can really make you look like a dirty mess using a loose powder or a pressed powder that is so personal preference I bounce all the time back and forth between the two. If I'm on location, I just find pressed powders easier because you don't have to dump them out, you're not fussing and all of that. Um, and you can get matte powders, you can get shimmery powders, you can get all kinds of powders, but for now we're just talking about like sealing up the makeup and that's normally done with a uh, either a, a matte powder or a, a pressed matte powder. Um, and no shimmer involved and you can use shimmers to kind of highlight afterwards um, but some makeup artists infuse a little bit of shimmer into their powder and you know to each his own it's fine so how I like to apply um, the pressed powder is going to obviously depend but most most of all I you know say we're taking this is a Laura Mercier one for an example it's a very popular powder taking up a little bit of powder on to that sponge that I was explaining about and then what I like to do is just dabble off the excess so it's kind of like in the sponge and then um, powder from there and the reason for that is that I don't get as much kind of dispersed in places I don't want it to be and it's just a good controlled way to do it but you're gonna find a way that works for you to each his own I just wanted to give you the way that I use in order to apply it I do not like to apply powder with a brush and that could shock a lot of you I find when I apply it with a brush like this and I open it up and I put it on with the brush whoop that's me um, and it's got powder it it's loose and it's uncontrolled and it's dispersing in places I may or may not want it so I prefer my personal preference is to use a sponge and controlled application I definitely like to do the crease area of the eye um, because that creases first unless I'm doing a really greasy oily look on the, a fashion look or something like that but on most people, I like to put a little bit of powder around the eye area first because your eyes are very hot and they will crease first. So when you go to powder, you want to wipe out the crease first and then gently powder those areas. Um, keeping in mind, the more heavy powder you put under a mature person's eyes, the more kiki it will look. So just remember that when you're doing that application work. 
So if you've got somebody with oilier skin, you can apply powder and then they can all of a sudden be oiling through the powder. You can either apply more powder or you can get some oil blotting papers or any kind of um, oil, uh, like any kind of creams underneath that can control, oil control creams is what I'm trying to say. And those kinds of things can help as well. Um, or you might want to put uh, like some sort of setting spray or a different type of primer. But anybody who has got oilier skin, keep an eye out for that because oil and powder don't mix the best. And a ton of oil with powder can make it look cakey even when you haven't put very much on. So take, a, take notice of the type of skin type that is happening before you do the makeup and make sure if they're oily or if you're oily that it is going to be controlled somehow. Um, but don't pack on, over pack on powder um, to the point of cakiness, but do apply a, a thin layer and a second layer if need be to control it to a certain degree, but don't pack it on so that it looks, you know, when it starts to come through, you could see all of that oil coming through the pores and the, it's a cakey mess. Anyways, just keep that in mind with oilier skins because it's an important aspect of something that you're going to run into and if you don't have oily skin then don't worry about it but that is for the oily people out there. So for today for your assignment I want you to do a little test. I want you to apply a uh, loose powder and a pressed powder half your face and I want you to try experimenting with both and I also want you to do half the face with a brush and half the face with the sponge technique that I taught you and uh, see what you feel comfortable better more comfortable with unless you try things you won't know so I want you to give a try to the sponge technique and tell me what you think um, and I'm really interested and curious to know also you can um, play around with a powder puff to see how that works out for you because um, a lot of people what they do is a bake it's called a bake and the, they'll take a little bit of powder and they'll just like put it on in a spot a lot heavier than that mind you but they'll put it on a spot like this and leave it on for say 10 minutes and then what happens when you dust this off is it leaves a hue of light behind and it gives a highlighting effect it does the same underneath the eyes and some people love to bake and they like to bake it all up the way into the nose and all kinds of places um, so you can play with baking and see what it does for you and uh, research that I'm not a heavy baker I played with baking but it's just not something I do on the daily I don't think it's necessary and it's just not a look that I'm into right now and you know that could be something that comes in and out of favor with makeup ongoing but yeah powder baking has and probably will always be a little bit of a thing so all right your assignments to try that and uh, I suggest that you definitely have a loose translucent powder and I suggest you have a pressed powder for to go things in your uh, purse or in your pocket or wherever you want to keep it so that you can do touch-ups later especially if you go out dancing uh, and if you're doing makeup on other people, you need to have a variety of color tones in your powder collection as you do your foundations. I suggest a minimum of six powders in your collection. And if it's for personal use, two to three powders should do it. Uh, a little bit lighter, a little bit translucent, and maybe you want one that you can give a little bit more depth to, like a uh, powder that's more of a contour color, like a pressed powder that's deeper in tone, that can give you a little bit more of a contour look if you want to choose doing something like that. I really like dual foundations that are powders, pressed powders to use as contour because uh, they are created in a way that they aren't so cakey. They're almost more moisturizing. Dual foundations uh, that are powder based and use that to contour with. It's pretty cool. Okay guys, we'll see you in the next one.